And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Family is important to me. I love my family. I care for each member of my family deeply. And one of the things that I enjoy most about my family is gathering around the dinner table. There's something very powerful, something very magical about gathering with your loved ones around a table to share a meal. Think about it. Time is set aside out of your busy day. Food is enjoyed. Life is sustained. Conversations are shared around the table. Memories are made. Holidays are celebrated around the table. There's something about a family gathering around a table that is sacred, that is, that is holy. And even if you're seated around a table with those that are not related to you by blood, it still seems like family, a sense of community. Gathering around the table is a very powerful thing. And especially when you are with family. I think of Jesus. Jesus himself gathered many times around tables. Jesus himself had a family. Jesus had a mother and a father. He had four brothers and two sisters. And Jesus was the oldest of the bunch. And he cared for all of his family deeply. And he believed in the importance of and valued the presence of his family, his own flesh and blood. However, looking at our scripture passage from the Gospel of Matthew today, it appears that, that Jesus suggests that his family is so much more than mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. To Jesus, it appears that his concept of family go way beyond the physical boundaries of flesh and blood. As the story goes, when Jesus was told that his mothers and brothers were waiting outside and wanted to speak to him, Jesus replied by saying something a little confusing. He says, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Was, was Jesus suffering from amnesia or something? What, what happened here? And then at that moment, Jesus pointed to his disciples and he said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, that is my brother and sister and mother. So what was Jesus saying here? Was he denying his own relationships with his immediate family? No. Jesus was saying that his family is so much bigger than just mom and dad and brothers and sisters. He says that family goes well beyond the, the physical boundaries and well into the spiritual. Jesus was suggesting in some supernatural way that he had a, an extended family. An extended family that was just as important to him and just as valued by him. He was talking about his disciples. He was talking about the people who do the will of God in their lives. But you know, we see by the life of Jesus that he was also, he also considered those family who were considered less than godly who were on the fringes, on the margins of society. Sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors, Pharisees. Jesus sat down with each of them and shared a meal with them. 
shared community with them, treated them like a brother or a sister. That's just the way that Jesus was. He would gather around the table with you and consider you a part of his family. You see, what Jesus was saying to them and to us in this passage is that the family of God is much, much bigger than we can imagine. If God is our Heavenly Father and we are His children through adoption, that makes all of us brothers and sisters from a spiritual standpoint. You see, we're not just friends. We're not just acquaintances. We're not strangers, and we're certainly not enemies. But we are a spiritual family. We are a family. And when I look out over this congregation today, I just don't see church members. I don't see just friends. I don't just see elders and deacons. I don't see guests and visitors. I don't see people who are on vacation necessarily. What I see is family. My family. You see, I'm more than just your pastor. I'm more than just your friend. I am also a part of your family. I am a brother in Christ. So I'm just one person, one sibling in a very large spiritual community that we call the church. We see a great picture of this family in the book of Acts, chapter 2. In Acts verse 42, it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So as a family, they learned about God together. They ate together. They prayed together. And then it says in verse 44, it goes on to say that all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he or she had need. You see, in this particular family, the family of God, there were no haves and have-nots. If somebody had more or if somebody had less, they would do whatever it took to take care of their family that everybody was cared for. And then in verse 46, it says that every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. This means that this family gathered every day to worship God as one body. You see, we, we, this is a marvelous picture of the earliest Christian family. Those people that we read about then, that is us today. We are the modern family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And what we have in this picture from the book of Acts is how the church family is to look and to act. How we are to care for one another. And they were doing God's will just by loving one another. That's what God's will is. And that's what we are to be doing today as the modern spiritual family. However, family isn't always like that, is it? Even when we gather around the table, sometimes the last thing we want is to be with family. Any of you ever been to a family reunion? Sometimes they're good, sometimes not so good. Oh, no, family. Because families have their problems, don't they? All families do. I don't care who you are. We all have our disputes. We have our squabbles. We have sibling rivalries. To some degree, every family is dysfunctional. You know, we talk about the dysfunctional family. Oh, that, that family is so dysfunctional. Well, so are you. All of us, to some degree, are dysfunctional. 
because we're made up of families are made up of human beings and none of us are perfect we're very imperfect people imperfect people make up families imperfect people make up the body of Christ this room is full of imperfect people including me and we're always going to be that way at least on this side of heaven it's been said and I love it that it says that the church is not a hotel for saints but a hospital for sinners and that's you and me we're imperfect But the good thing is that we are imperfect together. We're a part of a family. The body of Christ, we're brothers and sisters, and we help each other. We encourage each other. We empower one another. If somebody is down, we help them up. Because that's what family does. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell us. Is that even though you're imperfect, you're still a part of the family, the family of God. And the problem is, is when we allow our imperfections to divide us. It seems like now more than ever that, that families are, are dividing, families are splitting up. And we see it even within the church, within the family of God. We see churches dividing and splitting right down the middle for, for whatever reason. But I wonder if that grieves the heart of God to see his family, to see his children divided when they should be coming together as a family, as the family of God. But today, in spite of our imperfections, in spite of where we might see divisions, today we gather in this place at this time, on World Communion Sunday, and we're not divided at this moment by our flaws and our imperfections, but we come together with one purpose, and that's to worship God through Jesus Christ. And while some of us here are related to each other by flesh and blood, all of us are related to each other through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're family, brothers and sisters. Today, we gather here to worship God, and it's kind of like a family reunion, isn't it? It's kind of like a family reunion. Some of you, I don't even know who you are, but you're family to me. Not just in this place. Every time we gather together for Sunday school or Bible study or a committee meeting or a session meeting or what have you, that's a family reunion. You are with family. Every time we meet over in Silver Hall, that's a family reunion. And yes, every time we gather at the table of our Lord, that's a family reunion part of the family come to the table and eat freely because you're a part of the family so when Jesus said who are my mothers who are my brothers who are my, my sisters but those who do the will of God Jesus was saying that his family is much bigger than blood But his family includes me, and it includes you. Welcome to the family. God's people said, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are grateful that as our Heavenly Father, you have extended an invitation to each and every one of us to be a part of your family, in spite of our sin, in spite of our flaws, in spite of our imperfections. You love each and every one of us 
more than we could even imagine or even ask. Lord, we know that the love that we have for our own children and grandchildren, and yet your love for us is infinitely much more. And I pray for each of my brothers and sisters that are in this room today. Whatever they are going through, whatever hardship, whatever trials, Lord, I lift them up to you. That you would meet them right where they are, that you would extend your divine favor to them. That you would give them hope for today and for tomorrow and all the days of their lives. Lord, we thank you for hearing this prayer, for always being with us, never leaving nor forsaking us. And we do lift this prayer up in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.